What is up, everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? It is Saturday. It is September 28th. Right now, it is 12.15, just a little bit after noon here. And I've got Chris Richardson in the building, and we're going to kind of talk about the aftermath of Oculus Connect 6 and also some other little miscellaneous tidbits we'll get into that as well chris how are you doing man how's it going on a saturday i'm excellent it's a kind of overcast day but i'm looking forward to some vr in this afternoon yeah i wonder if it's a california wide thing because it's definitely overcast here as well uh so maybe that uh winter front is moving in i don't know whatever the weather is like but yeah it's nice dude when i was in san jose i was amazed how like warm it was but i guess i shouldn't have been amazed it's in a valley but like i got there in the evening on on tuesday night it was like it was like 10 30 at night and i was wearing shorts and a t-shirt and i was perfectly comfortable like it was really very nice and warm at night it was kind of weird nice um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So, you know what? I wanted to start off with a couple of little news tidbits before we get into the show proper. Um, and so first thing I just wanted to, um, there is a deal that is going on that you guys probably should take advantage of out there in the VR gaming world. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our webinar real quick. And so here we go, Vertigo, the original game, not Vertigo 2, but this is the original Vertigo. Uh, there is a demo that you can download, but why not just buy it for a dollar fifty? A dollar fifty, ninety percent off. This deal is going to end on October second, so you got a little while to go for this. Now, here's the really weird thing about this. It says Valve Index, and, and this developer, Zach, uh, I don't even want to try to pronounce his last name, but Zach, you know, the the like 17-year-old phenomenon guy that made this original Vertigo. Now I think he's like 20 or 21 or whatever, because it's been a number of years. And of course, he's working on Vertigo 2. A lot of us have played the Vertigo 2 demo, but he's like very tight with Valve and very close with Valve. And the crazy thing is, is John Shubrick on our Discord, VR365 Discord server, was saying that this game does not work right on the Valve Index, that it does not, like it doesn't work right. I don't know if that was maybe just his experience or what, but you would think this game would work flawlessly because he's so closely tied to Valve and, you know, he's been working with the Index for a long time. You would think this would work absolutely beautifully, but you can see here, very positive on the reviews. Have you ever played the original Vertigo, Chris? I have not. Um, I own it, <laughs> and it was because of you talking about it, um, but uh, I haven't had a chance to actually give it a whirl. Still buying games and not playing them, huh? <laughs> when will I learn? I don't know, man. Uh, but no, is it... Is it one of those things? Do you do you ever collect anything? Like, are you a collector? Because I used to collect old video games. Like, I would I would go to garage sales and buy Super Nintendo cartridges everywhere I could find them. And I would I was a collector. Like, I I would try to amass things. Almost like I got a little bit of that hoarder in me. I, my mom has a major hoarder problem, and you know I inherited part of it. And I wonder if people out there they see these deals you know, various steam sales and stuff, and they just can't help themselves. They just buy, 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 and they create this gigantic collection. Are you kind of like that? Yep, you pegged me. <laughs> I'm hey, not gonna I, deny it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I mean, I was, I was like that. I've been trying to, there's this um, Japanese lady, right? I forget her name, but she's very famous. You know, the whole like tidy up or whatever. And, and she does this thing where, she picks up these things and asks you, does this bring you joy? And if it doesn't bring you joy right here and right now, get rid of it. And so it's like this minimalist thing, like let's scale back. Let's not have as many things. You guys don't see over here, there's a lot of junk. And it's like that old collector-a-thon thing. But I've been doing better. I'm not buying every little game down the road. Um, 
But yeah, we, we all have this problem. Alex VR is in chat, and he's saying my backlog is pretty deep. And so Alex VR, I met this guy at Oculus Connect 6, really cool dude. And, and we're going to be talking about Oculus Connect 6. We're going to get to that in just a sec. And that was definitely one of the best things of the whole entire thing, was meeting uh, a lot of people. But let's go ahead and move on with the news. Now, another thing I wanted to mention real quick is I'm just going to look in here. Doctor Who, The Edge of Time. Okay, so this game right here, Doctor Who, The Edge of Time. Now, it still says September, but the way I understand it, this game is not set. Like, here's a recent update. This was on Wednesday, September 25th. So this is just, just this last Wednesday. And they say here, Today we are really excited to have a new wave of previews and screenshots. The team has been working hard on the game. And while we are almost finished, there are still some kinks the team needs to iron out basically and they have a number of different screenshots that they're showing you from the experience with which these screenshots look pretty freaking cool and um, a number of people have made comments about this like GameSpot Edge of Time is finally a Doctor Who game that well feels like Doctor Who and Six Axis says it feels like a greatest hits compilation um, you know, so a lot of good words here. A lot of people saying some good things about Doctor Who, like Upload VR says, for Who fans though, Edge of Time represents the first real chance to step into a world they've loved for next nearly 60 years. If even just looking at the TARDIS as intended for the first time brings a smile to your face, the rest of it might all be worth it. Uh, so a number of good quotes and stuff, and this is one of the games that we are looking forward to. It does say September, but based on what you know, based on what they said right there, you got to imagine, you know, October, probably late October, maybe you know, might even slip into November. But there's a brand new trailer for this, uh, which shows some gameplay and stuff. And I grabbed that. Why don't we take a quick look at this before we move on here? So I'm going to go ahead and. Bounce back over to this scene. I'm going to pump the volume up on Eye of the Temple, which is by Sanctum Dreams. This is another cool game that we're looking forward to. I don't think we really have a date on this, but kind of an Indiana Jones room scale kind of a deal here, like a puzzle game. Looks pretty sweet. Pump up the volume on this, and let's check out this brand new Doctor Who trailer. So let me go ahead and do this. forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. Okay, so that is the trailer. That is a brand new trailer. Just came out like a day or so ago for Doctor Who, The Edge of Time, which is, as you can see, it's coming to pretty much all the major platforms, not Oculus Quest, but all the big PC VR platforms and also 
PlayStation VR, originally scheduled for September, but looks like it's going to take a little while longer. But looking at these graphics, like looking at the environments, and you know what it kind of reminds me of a little bit is, it reminds me a little bit of Red Matter, just from the standpoint of Red Matter has these really gorgeous environments, but there's not like, you're not like shooting aliens and stuff, so there's not like things moving around but really gorgeous environments that you're moving through and then you're solving puzzles, you're doing things, although that did look like possibly a little enemy or monster type thing that was running around there. Now, this puzzle here looks kind of, um, you know, like early VR games of the basic puzzles that we get in a lot of early VR games, but it looks like pretty good production values. What do you think, Chris? Do you think this is one you're going to be excited for? Uh, anything that allows me to hang out in with a Dalek in real life, I'm I'm pretty pumped for. Um, Red Matter, yeah, I was like, I, I finally got around to playing Red Matter, and I I'm I think is it Jarillo who's oh. like the, the guy who's who's not so pumped for Red Matter. It, it's a mist like, and those kinds of games are, you know, I can take them or leave them. Uh, it's pretty, but. Uh, <clears throat> I, I like a little more interaction and it looks like this doctor who might be uh, right up my alley yeah yeah i think it looks pretty good i mean I, i'm still a fan of red matter but yeah i know like some people see the problem with red matter is is like i just ran and rave about it so much and so it's like anything if somebody's ranting and raving about a movie or a new album and you haven't experienced it yet and then you get it you're like, um, you know, your expectations are like through the roof and then you finally get it and you're like, uh, kind of like how I felt about a game that I tried at OC6. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Actually, why don't we start getting into the OC6 discussion here? Um, but real quick, before we do that, F. Frank says, is Vertigo any good? It just went on sale for $1.49, 90% off. That was actually the very first story that we covered today. And Hussein X in chat says he played and completed Vertigo. It was a good experience. I like it. I think it's a good experience. Now, if you've played the Vertigo 2 demo, it's not as good as that. It's not as polished. It's not as like double A looking Vertigo. The original Vertigo is much more indie. It was um, Zach's first crack at it. You know, the guy was like 17 years old when he did that. I think he's got a couple of more people that have helped with Vertigo 2. But it's still impressive. It's like the, the demo is actually very impressive. I would say play the demo of Vertigo, uh, the original Vertigo, but damn, it's $1.50. I mean, come on. <laughs> and you might as well buy Dimension Hunter for 99 cents while you're at it. You know, you get both of those for less than the price of a small vanilla latte at Starbucks. How can you not go, you know, how can you go wrong with that? Um, yep. But it's yeah. your opportunity to get a little bit of um, pistol whip right now. Yeah, yeah. Dimension Hunter, very, very pistol whip-esque, uh, super hot, kind of has the feel of those kind of games. Okay, so what I thought we would do here is one of the things that I did coming into today's episode is I kind of was thinking about my biggest disappointments from OC6 and then also my biggest highlights from OC6. And so what I was thinking we could do is I could pop these things on the screen and we could kind of walk through them. And I'll also get uh, Chris's opinions on these things and kind of what he felt about these different issues and stuff. So this might make for some good fodder here. So let me go ahead and grab uh, the, the beginning. Um, these are my biggest disappointments from OC6. We'll start off with the bad stuff. We got a lot more bad stuff, unfortunately, than we do good stuff here. And so I've got my 10 biggest OC6 disappointments. And so number one, Chris, this was the biggest for me, that there wasn't any big double A PC VR games announced. Now, a lot of people would say, well, wait a minute, why do you care about double A? Don't we want more triple A? Well, I kind of already felt like we weren't going to get triple A. Like I, I had already prepared my mind for that. But what I was hoping for, Chris, is, well, you know, you weren't as impressed with Red Matter, but that was one of my examples. Like Red Matter 
Killing Floor Incursion, uh, The Mage's Tale, Windlands 2. You know, all of these games share a pedigree of being Oculus exclusives for a, a period of time. And then they came to Steam and they came to PlayStation and stuff like that. But they started off as Oculus exclusives. I, I believe they were funded I, I don't know funded 100%, but a lot of funding by Oculus, The Mage's Tale, Killing Floor, you know, um, and AA games. I don't, you know, I'm not sure if we would call them AAA because they're not up there with like Fallout and Skyrim and Stormland and, you know, big games like that. But, but great AA games, really solid games. And I was really hoping we might get a couple of these announcements. And Chris, I'm going to ask you, was anything like this announced? Because if it was, I missed it. Well, I, th I think people have forgotten an announcement that was made two years ago <clears throat> by Jason Rubin. He said, um, hey, <clears throat> we're, we're no longer going to be doing things like the the every month you get a new game that we're going to be funding. We're going for um, uh, bigger bets, but fewer of them. And if you if you think about it, we get two big bets that they, they put down uh, this year. We're, we're getting um, Stormland and we're, we're getting uh, Asgard's Wrath. Next year, we're getting uh, Lone Echo 2 and we're getting Medal of Honor. And they've put years into Medal of Honor. I, I know that there, there's some discussion we're going to have over your impressions of that game, but like there's been a lot of effort put into making that game work just right. And I'm very eager to see what they come, what, what we get for that. Chris, um, I am super glad that I have you today because you are the perfect antidote to all my negativity that I might <laughs> that I might have for this thing. No, you did, that was a great job. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Jason Rubin did say that. He did say that. I kind of forgot about that. Great point. That is a great point. I still reserve the right to be a little bit disappointed by this though because I mean, my worry like the, the counter argument I'd have for everything that you're saying is like every game that you mentioned has already been a known quantity. Like we didn't know it was named Medal of Honor, but we knew we were getting it. And so like my my worry is kind of more future, future worry of like, yeah, all this stuff was kind of already known. And so what did we get that we didn't know? But let's go ahead and move on to number two. Okay, so number two for me is no truly triple a quest exclusives revealed outside of stress level zeros project four and it could be debated that that's more double a like i don't know that we consider stress level zero a triple a developer because what they've done so far hover junkers duck season both pretty good and of course, they're working on Boneworks right now. That's their third project. And then project four is going to be this quest game. Um, and we'll have to see how great that is. But one of the things I was really hoping for, Chris, is Oculus, you know, they seem to be very focused on the Oculus quest. And I'm personally okay with that. Like, I, I actually, I'm fine with that. But if you are going to be super focused on the quest, and if that is going to be your champion, well, what I would really love them to do is take a developer like 4A Games that made Arctica 1, which I thought was a, a pretty wonderful um, shooting gallery, uh, Action Jackson, you know, Michael Bay kind of experience on the Oculus Rift, uh, Arctica 1. And, you know, take a developer like 4A Games and say, you know what, here's what we want you to do. Work for two full solid years on just tapping the Oculus Quest power to the fullest extent. And let's have a real powerful exclusive for the Oculus Quest that really shows off its power. And I felt like there was nothing like that. I mean, we did get the Stress Level, pro a stress level Zero Project 4. So what do you think about this complaint that I have? Well, I'm going to have to <laughs> attack it from another angle. Go ahead, go ahead. I feel you're completely and utterly off base here. Oh, all right. <laughs> the reason why is because I know people in my life, like the majority of the people that I know, have never played Beat Saber. 
And if I put an Oculus Quest on their head, give them, and I, I got these lovely, uh, this thing is uh, definitely needed if you're oh. playing Beat Saber on a Quest, because like having that extra grip is excellent. But uh, if I give them a couple of Sabers and tell them, okay, just, f and then I put them in the demo, it's like, just follow the instructions in the demo. They are blown away. And I think that's what the Quest is. It's a new platform that gets VR out there beyond Google Cardboard. This is a Google Cardboard replacement. Before, people were putting their phones in a piece of cardboard, moving around, and that was their first experience. Now we have the Quest. That's amazing. That's just phenomenal. And to pr pick and choose from what we as VR veterans have already played, you know, the super hots, the, you know, the creme de la creme, and be able to put that in a mobile platform that anybody can put on at any time. I leave my quest out on the countertop in the kitchen. And when I have a, you know, get up for my smoke break, because I work at home, <laughs> I'll slip that on for 15 minutes and just, you know, get a couple of games in that way. Um, so, for me, I think the Quest is a way of, it doesn't need exclusives. In fact, exclusives are the thing that piss people off across <laughs> all platforms. And if we're really a niche of a niche, what the hell are you worrying about exclusives for this device for? We're trying to get this device out to the world, right? Yeah, yeah. No, you know, honestly, I actually agree with basically everything you're saying here because, you know, the argument that I always hear, I always hear people saying, Quest has no games. Like, like, where's the games? Where's the content? And I actually make the same argument that you just made because I say, well, look at somebody like Gaming Science Teacher. The Quest is a freaking dream come true for her because she hasn't had a VR platform anywhere. And so now she gets showered upon with all these great things that, yeah, we've already experienced it because we had VR since 2016, 2017. We've played super hot. We've played all these games. And so they're kind of old news to us. But like, that's the point you're making that this isn't, this isn't, the quest is not for us, basically. It's not for the hardcore. Oh, no, it's, it's for, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's for the, you know, it's for the, what did Nintendo call it? The blue ocean or whatever. It's kind of like that, right? They're trying to get everybody with it. And I, I, I agree with that. I really do. But I also feel like, throw us a bone you know throw us like one little bone like i mean they had 250 million or whatever that they were throwing at all these people right and you said that they're going to make less bets but they're going to be bigger bets and i just kind of want one really big bet that is on the platform that they seem to prefer um you know and i know what we're going to disagree about exclusivity because i feel like it's a console I, I mean, I feel like the Oculus Quest is a console, and I feel like consoles need an identity, and the way that you get an identity is you have an exclusive. When I think PlayStation, I think like Final Fantasy. I think like God of War. I, I think, you know, when I think Xbox, I think Halo. I think Crackdown. I think Gears of War. And I feel like if you're a, and you think of Nintendo, you think Zelda, you know, et cetera, like Mario Kart, consoles have identities and, and consoles have exclusives. And I know, yeah, a lot of people are like, well, we don't want any exclusives. You know, everything should come to everything. But anyway, let's let's move on because we'll get too wait, long. Wait, before, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Move on. Okay. There is an exclusive coming to the Quest that you've forgotten about. Okay. Heat Saber 360. It's the, but isn't that coming everywhere eventually? I think no. it's just coming first to the Quest. I, I'm almost positive because it, <laughs> you tangle yourself up in the cords. I think it's, 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 it's specifically, maybe it's first, but even if it's not, the Quest is the only platform I can go to my local dog park and play Beat Saber in. You know? Yeah, yeah. So that that that's you you can't beat that. Okay, okay. Let's move on to number three. Um, let's see. So number three, so Medal of Honor. Now, so what I have here is Medal of Honor, mildly anticlimactic. And I actually mean this in multiple ways. Okay. Um, when I first saw the trailer and it popped on, you know, I'm sitting in the keynote 
place. Like I'm actually there physically, which is really kind of cool. And Zuck, you know, he's on stage and everything. And and bam, Medal of Honor. Like I was uh, like the first thing I saw was like World War II, and I'm like, whoa, World War II. Like that really threw me for a loop because I thought for sure like Titanfall VR, Apex Leg, like a spinoff from Apex Legends or Titanfall or something that'd be VR, and it would be basically multiplayer, 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 like Echo Arena, like um, Pavlov onward. I thought it was going to be like that, right? And so seeing Medal of Honor and World War II actually kind of uh was nice i kind of like that but in terms of mildly anticlimactic i think that's more from maybe a, like a graphics kind of a thing like i actually played this game i got a demo of it we'll talk more about that a little bit later but i don't know i felt like even the graphics in the trailer and stuff it's like weren't we all expecting the biggest powerhouse ever from respawn entertainment like like wasn't like isn't respawn entertainment maybe the single biggest developer to make a dedicated vr game because you could think about bethesda right but they haven't made a dedicated vr game you know this and, and you could think about like insomniac and some of the other ones but not as big as respawn i think respawn is an even bigger developer so do you think there's anything anti anticlimactic about Medal of Honor being that secret game that we are waiting for? I think it's kind of a big thing <laughs> uh, because I, I remember getting my 360 and there were two games that I I I played the the night that I got it. One um, one was the racing game. Um, which I've already forgot the one that gave you kudos. Mid it wasn't Midnight Club. Oh yeah, a Burnout Paradise. No, no, it wasn't no. Burnout. Oh. But anyway, okay. it, one was a racing game, and racing games, you know, limited viewpoint. They always look pretty. But the thing that um, blew me away was Call of Duty. Call of Duty, and I think it was World War One. Um, it just looked spectacular on a console. The graphics were just sparkling. And um, this is an opportunity for the Infinity Ward guys who created Medal of Honor in the first place and spun off and became Respawn Entertainment to go back to their roots and to have a huge, you know, it. the latest Medal of Honor games have been nothing to write home about, um, flat gaming, but... Um, to get that opportunity to turn that original experience into a, a VR game, you know, go back to the beaches of Normandy and storm them in VR. <laughs> I mean, VR just changed things for me. I kind of getting gotten out of gaming. I have a 360 uh, or an X. Uh, yeah, I have a uh, um, uh, Xbox One, maybe. Yeah. yeah See, okay. I can't even remember. <laughs> The yeah. thing hasn't been turned on for so long. It might as well. I, I need to sell that. <laughs> I have an Xbox One. I have a PlayStation Four. Um, I don't touch them. But VR got me back into game. I was out. I was doing other things. I was playing board games. I had other collectibles to <laughs> collect. Uh, but this this dragged me back into it, and it's that sense of presence you can't get it anymore. And getting a big title like this where they're from the ground up making it for VR so you can do things like pull the pin with your teeth. Come on, Anthony. These are the things <laughs> that we dream of, that we want done, that we're not getting so far. Everything's been just this little demo. From what I hear, this is like 50-plus missions. This has you know, potentially multiplayer. <laughs> it does have multiplayer. I talked to a respawn guy because I actually, I, there was, um, I was waiting to get my demo and a respawn guy was standing right by me. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I chatted with him for a quick second and I, I told him, I told him exactly what I had said before, where I thought, you know, I thought this would going to be Titanfall and, or it was going to be Apex and it was going to be multiplayer, multiplayer, multiplayer. And I was surprised. And I was like, does this have any multiplayer? And he's like, yeah, we're not talking about it right now, but it definitely has multiplayer. So awesome. It, yeah. Awesome. So dude, this is the full package. <laughs> this is what we've been waiting for. And you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like the version that you got to play is is 
a little toned down and and not the full fledged thing because there's story elements. There's definitely going to be yeah. story that they're going to be putting you in. You're getting your full fledged first person game. You're getting a multiplayer game, and it's all built from the ground up in VR. What's not to be excited about? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I will agree with you from this standpoint. From a VR from a VR uh, side of things, I love like period pieces. I love being brought to like another time and another place. And mm -hmm. so World War II, like to be brought back to that era with the cars and radios and black and white TVs or whatever things are happening at that time, like that's really cool. I do like that. And so to to have um that is something i super like about it and also like my demo wasn't the greatest like the demo that i had uh, it to me it felt very much like just kind of a shooting gallery but but it's so early it's so early so it's kind of unfair for me to really judge on it you know because it's very very early but let's go ahead and go to number four Okay, so this isn't kind, you know, it isn't directly related to OC6 here, but but where was the counter programming, man? Where was Halo? Man? I mean, not Halo. Where was Half Life, man? Um, I was a little bit. I'm actually a little bit worried about this. I've already. I think I've mentioned this on another episode, like one of the other talks that I did in the last couple of days. Because I'm worried because if we're really getting this secret Valve game this year, shouldn't they be? Shouldn't they have a trailer by now? And if they have a trailer, why not use it to like really ruin OC Six in a way? What What would you say to like if I asked you that question? Like what would What would you say to that? Uh, I'm happy <laughs> that they didn't do it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm actually the opposite side of the coin on you. That's everywhere. great. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, it's perfect. I, I, I thought it was kind of um, unprofessional and rude of them to do uh -huh. what they did during F8. Um, but, you know, funny, the, but funny, but <laughs> funny. It, it was funny. Sure. And it got okay. the clicks for, for, for sure. But like that, that's just not, it strikes me as being like, this is supposed to be um, a platform where we're trying to get it to everyone. And what Valve is doing is nice for the people who um, really are graphics whores and, and want the creme de la creme and, and are willing to pay that extra dime to get like the, the top tier equipment. You know, like I actually am jealous of that headset with its slightly bigger f field of view and comfort settings and, and whatnot. Um, but like for a thousand dollars, because I didn't have any of it, I, d I don't have base stations. I, I really don't want to be locked into one place for playing. I, I like the fact that I can take my Rift S and yes, I have a Rift S <laughs> and it is not dead. Just sell it, man. <laughs> Just dump it. No, no, I, know, no, I know, I know, I know. Why the hell would I? We'll get into that. Okay, it's yeah, got to yeah. be one of your your points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's a reason I think you should keep your Rift S if you're going to you know continue on. But anyway, um, they are basically providing that tier of the um, of of the VR experience um, for people who want that level of engagement, you know, they're the tinkerers. They want to play around with settings and, you know, fiddle around to get their games to work somewhat. Uh, I'm that casual player that wants to put the damn thing on, have it work. And, you know, if I can get that at a, a reasonable cost, I, hey, I'm, I'm happy. So like for, for me, this, you know, counter-programming thing, it would have been nice to hear something about the Valve games. I'm, I, it's not like I don't want those games to come out. I'm expecting those games to come out, and I'm expecting them not to be exclusive games tied only to their hardware, but able to be played by everything in, in, in the line. But will that be the case? Not a clue. We won't know until they finally disclose the information. But I think Valve is taking that, that whole concept of when it's ready, we'll let you know. You know, and it'll just drop. Boom. Um, yeah, that is that. That's their modus operandi, huh? Do they ever have a trailer in advance anyway? Or, like, do they ever, like, say, oh, this game is coming on November 29th? Or do they ever do that? Or do they just, 
Like I don't yeah. know because I don't Back really. Back in the day, wasn't it episode yeah. two? Was a, or no? P- Portal would have been Portal Two was their last game, right? What was the card game they just did though? Uh, that kind of bombed, Archiac or something like that, or what was it called? Artifact or something? Like I don't what... know. I didn't play. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> God, I can't remember. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not into the flat stuff. Um, man, it's like I know it's Archiac or something like that. Um, ah don't even remember but that was like the last that was the last big valve game and i don't know if they had a uh did they have a trailer did they have a date like we almost need to go back to the past history and see what is valve do like they they don't make games hardly anymore but what did they do the last time they made a game they rake in so much money with steam they don't need to make games they're they're, you know (laughs) it's it's they own the platform of pc distribution so you, yeah, know. you know people agree with you in chat so zim talk 5 who happens to be in chat by the way and and i met zim talk 5 at oc6 awesome to finally meet him um He's he said well to meet him in person to yeah um <laughs> He says, Chris is spot on. It is a bit of a poor move to counter your opponent at their widely publicized showtime. And uh, Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality says, yeah, I agree with Chris. Once was funny, but multiple times is just bad form. Okay. Oh, Artifact. Yeah, Artifact was the um, Artifact was the last uh, Valve game. And... Um, yeah, let's let's go over to the webinar real quick. Just oh my god, mostly negative. Uh, let's go to uh, over here real quick. Yeah, so this was the last Valve release, as far as I know, like major Valve game, November twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. Mostly negative, mixed reviews. It's going for twenty bucks. A card game reimagined, what everybody always wanted, right? Uh, but I'm really curious, like, did they have a trailer that came before this? And did it have a date on it? You know, I, we need a Valve. We need a hardcore Valve fan to let us know how that all worked out. Because I don't know how that happened. Um, Can you be- go to the web and all and just see if there's anything on YouTube? Yeah, I don't want to spend time doing that. But let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Um, okay. Yeah, so number five, I've got, okay, and this is not like a huge disappointment, but I was kind of looking forward to something like this. Okay, no Oculus Viveport clone. Like, I really think Viveport is a freaking fantastic idea, concept. I think it's great value. I think somebody that's new to PC VR gaming that doesn't have this gigantic back catalog, which I know that eliminates us, but somebody kind of new that gets PC VR, Viveport is freaking awesome, right? You get the, you know, especially Viveport Infinity, you pay every month, but you got all these games you can choose from. It's the Netflix of VR. And I kind of thought Oculus might have a similar thing. That didn't happen. Any comments on that? Well, thanks for reminding me of this because I have an <clears throat> an, uh, an Odyssey. And uh, apparently if you have an, a Samsung Odyssey, you can get Viveport for two months free. So uh, I need to check that out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> maybe it's because Viveport is, you know, it, it started off kind of rocky and, uh, you told stories of blue screens of death when it launched, and yeah. and uh, maybe it's because they've stuck it out and survived and have opened their gates. So I believe, you know, they've, I know for a fact, Oculus headsets are welcome to work in Viveport now. They, they open their, their arms to that. So maybe it's the fact that uh, a service already exists and does that well enough to the point where they didn't feel the need to try and compete in that space. I mean, they've got a lot of ores in the fire that they're working and, um, you know, maybe one more thing is, is something that they're just not interested in at this time. Yeah. And the other argument you could make is it's almost too good of a deal. You know, it's almost too good of a deal. Like they want to sell the full games, you know, they don't want to give her, but, but see what, like if Oculus did do a Vive port, I think the way they would do it is like, you wouldn't, 
there would be no games from 2018 and 2019 in the deal. It would be like 2016. Like you'd be playing Kronos, you know, you'd be playing Edge of Nowhere and you'd be playing like, uh, you know, the older games. Like they would like, and maybe every once in a while, a, a more recent game, but like a smaller developer would pop in there, you know, like a Fisherman's Tale or something would pop in there every once in a while. Okay, so number six um, and this one, man, okay, so you've got the Franken mod, bro. You've got the Franken mod. It is a beautiful thing. I saw those at the show. I saw a lot. I, I've got to do it now. I've got to do it. I don't know if main fan is in chat, but main fan, if you still want to sell that puppy, I will buy it because people were all over OC6 with quests with Franken mod, and I think it's a must have accessory. Um, and I was hoping that Oculus might officially lean into that, not where they would like make a big deal out of it, but you could go to the Oculus website and you could go to accessories and maybe you could buy a special deluxe audio. What I'm talking about here, DAS deluxe audio strap, you know, improved audio and, uh, and an improved comfort thing that you can mod your quest, but officially from Oculus, like belt officially for it. The other thing was, PlayStation aim. I don't have my controller right here, but man, how awesome would it be if we had like a PlayStation aim kind of thing that worked with quest and rift and then all kinds of games could support it. You know, they were doing like medal of honor when they were doing demos, they actually had freaking, uh, one of the demos was they had like a gun stock for people to use while they were playing it. And so it'd be cool if we had an official, you know, Rumble $99 kind of gun thing officially from Oculus. What do you think about this one? I have, I think they have no intention of getting into the peripherals market. Hell, even the, the <laughs> one thing about the Rift S that I, I am upset about <clears throat> is this. The facial interface being that um, sponge <laughs> that you can't take off because it's glued in. Uh, um, yeah. Mike at Virtual Reality Oasis did a great video showing how you can like replace that with the VR cover piece. And uh, I guess an official one is coming, but he couldn't take it anymore. It was too grody. So he, he jumped the gun and, and, and took it upon himself to, re um, to replace that. Um, they don't want to do any add-ons. They're, they're making the core product and they're leaning on people like VR Cover, who they worked with for the interface for the Rift, and then they <laughs> they made a change at the last minute, which uh, screwed up the VR Covers that they had for um, the first run. Um, and they had to retool the, the, the facial interface. So I can only imagine money has changed hands between Oculus and some of these third-party guys so that they will jump in and do that. I know ProTube was there last year w when they had the eSports tournament. And like a lot of those guys on stage were using that prop that you're talking about that you saw being used in Medal of Honor. Um, I bought one. I bought a force tube, which has the haptic feedback. Um, have I played with it much yet? Not really. There's like one demo on, on the Quest that works, and the Quest is what I'm using most of the time. I need to play my Rift more so I can actually use some of these third-party things. But Carmack talked about this on the uh, Joe Rogan show. He sees it all as being an impediment to playing the game. It's, it's it's a thing that you have to, oh, is that battery charged? No. Is that working? No. That's all going to slow you down from playing. You want one device. You've got one chance to get that person who suddenly has it in his mind that I want to play VR. And if you put anything in the way of that, you, you're, you're you know rolling a stone uphill. Okay, now here's one I think you're not going to argue me too much about. Number seven, no Dead and Buried 2 type arena scale. Dude, you were That's there last it. year. You experienced yeah. this. I come yeah. here this year. I think there's going to be some advanced thing, right? Nada, nothing. I fully expected there to be, after they did that sneak announcement, that you'd be able to play uh, Space Pirate Arena there. Like they showed you like the glory, <laughs> multiple people in a local area with quests on playing, uh, you know, together. Um, 
it was a great last year they had um the void and um the void star wars experience and the dead and buried uh six player experience and they were right next to each other and it was like you know a long wait and damn i waited in that line that's where i saw rowdy guy (laughs) and uh it was it was fantastic it was phenomenal um everybody came away from that demo just blown away like you could see dollar signs in people's eyes as they were trying to figure out how to you know get get this working um locally in order to set up a a, you know paintball style arena and the fact that they're not doing anything with it or seem to have gone quiet on it is just bizarre to me so, yeah, I mean, uh, a side note too is I was wondering if we might might finally get the uh, the arcade, you know, being able to use a quest in an arcade officially through Oculus. Like nothing from that, as far as I heard. I wasn't really yeah. paying attention to it much, but I don't think I heard anything at all about that. Yeah, Viveport for business by Oculus makes complete sense, and I'm completely with you on that. They need some way of licensing games so that people can you know, rent them on a time basis and pay, you know, a royalty fee and, you know, make some bank on that. Okay, so let's go to number eight. This is taking a lot longer than I ever thought it would be. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I mean, this this whole thing going through all 10 of these. Okay, so number eight for me was a severe lack of Quest and Rift demos. Like in my wildest dreams, I would have never imagined that I would go to Oculus Connect 6 and there would literally only be like nine or 10 different games and the whole entire place that you could try, many of which people have tried at tons of other places, um, like Asgard's Wrath, Stormland. People have tried it. It's They're coming out in a couple of weeks, practically. Like, where was Arizona Sunshine for the quest? Where was Population 1 for the quest? Where was, uh, I don't know, you know, I'm not thinking of all the games that are coming up, like uh, Table Tennis... Uh, uh, 11 table tennis VR for the quest, you know, like they're so into the quest. Well, have a bunch of quest demos that sh- they could have set up ping pong tables and had you stand by it while you're playing 11 table tennis VR or some, you know, little things like that. But there was not very many demos to truly like, so Chris, I don't know if you've seen it, but Cass and Char, Cass and Cherry, Cass and Cherry, I got to say it the right way. I always think Chari, but it's pronounced Cherry. Okay, so Cass and Cherry did a video where they walked around the entire area and they were just, you know, freestyling, just walking around the entire area, talking about all the different booths and stuff. And as they're walking around, gigantic, open, huge areas of emptiness that could have been additional demos. Um, And this is something that all the other YouTube guys kind of were complaining about a little bit. Yeah, they, from what it, from all accounts, I'm very happy I didn't pay this year <laughs> to go to this thing. I was like, I was, you know, feeling a little bumming about the fact that I, you know, I couldn't, I, I did everything I could to try and get a free ticket, couldn't get in that way. So I was like, uh, I really can't afford it this year. I bought too many headsets. <laughs> so, um, but like, it sounds like I, 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 this is the one to skip. <laughs> I yeah, probably. That. Probably. Okay, number nine for me, Stormland. So, okay, here's the thing, man. So the first time I tried Stormland was at GDC, impressed like a mofo. You know, I I mean, I was looking at my robot arms. I'm like, oh, my God. And, and like I was in the sunlight. Everything seemed really amazing. Um, it was a single player demo. Okay, so this demo was a co op demo with one other person. And I don't know if it was like the controllers I was using, but the controls just seemed really frustrating. And, and it seemed like I don't want to blow this out of proportion. I don't want to like say Stormlands a dud or anything like that. I mean, I'm sure it's still going to be an incredible game and it's going to, everybody's going to want to buy this game. But I was like, I don't know, There, after playing this demo, like I walked out of the demo and I was like, I, was like uh, I don't know what I just saw right now. I'm a little mm-hmm. bit concerned, um, but, you know, not much to say there. Uh, Is there specifics about the controls that weren't working? Just like, 
you're hitting different buttons and you're trying to like run faster and it would be like, okay, sometimes I'm running faster. Sometimes I'm not running faster and, and I'm pushing, you know how you'll be in different games where the thumbstick you like, you push down and go forward with a thumbstick to like do a sprint or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like doing that, but then sometimes it's, it doesn't seem to work at all. And I don't know if that was based on maybe a, uh, like a meter that I wasn't paying attention to that was running out or something, but just convoluted controls is what, like, I'm sure this is something where you get Stormland, you're not in a booth with people, you know, and you, you you have, it's quiet, you can enjoy it, you're experiencing it the right way, you have time, you're going to learn the controls, everything's probably going to be fine. Yep, yep. I recently played a game and it was like, it was new to me and I was playing it in, at somebody else's place. And uh, like, I, I was so flustered, I wasn't able to reload properly and like was dying all over the place. So like, you know, those first blush with a control setup, there's always the time that you don't get that's personal time for your own acclimating yourself with the controls. Uh, and a you know a, a demo at a show is is always going to give you that kind of uh, uh, experience where it's like I don't know if I really got the feel of that. So one one other that's... minor uh, one other minor complaint I'll say about Stormland is like so I was in there and there's there's very interesting like alien plant life that like this pod thing this big round pod thing and i've got all these freaking guns you know and just naturally i thought i'm going to shoot this pod thing it's going to explode into all kinds of gooey gunk or something like that and there were plants that did that but there were also plants you shot them nothing happened at all and Mm -hmm. uh, and i was like isn't this insomniac? What are but but I mean I don't want to I don't want to blow it out of proportion. I'm it's still going to be a great game, you know. Whatever. I just I just my hype level for Stormland like went down several pegs after that demo is what I got to say. Like, but it might be a false impression because I don't really care about co op anyway. I'm going to be doing freaking single player. I love single player, and it's probably going to be awesome. Okay, number ten. This is kind of a dumb one, but you know. I mean, they did say Facebook is making AR glasses, you know, big black background, right, with Zuck on stage. And one of my predictions coming into the show is I didn't think we'd actually, like, have prototype glasses on the floor or anything. But one thing I thought they might have is, like, some kind of, like, thing that you would walk up to, you know, and you would, like, stick, yeah, you would stick your head in it and you'd see just a little kind of AR demo Nothing Mm -hmm. like that. I mean, you know, very minor thing, not a big deal. Um, Now let's switch over to the positives after this took forever. Okay, so I did want to try to run down some nice things that happened. And some of these are going to be really dumb, but I'll go through them anyway really quick here. And And I did this like five minutes before the show started, so not really arranged very well here. But okay, so the number one thing, the generosity of Chris from VR Roundtable much love to Chris, dude. Oh, man. First of all, he let me stay in his hotel for free, his hotel room, for two nights. So that was really huge. And then also, like, he spent a lot of time. Like, he's the one that recorded, you know, when we did our little we did our little impromptu recordings on um, Wednesday night and Thursday night. We did these little recordings, but he did all the editing and the rendering and the uploading and it took forever and there was a lot of editing and stuff. And so I just want to give a a thank you to Chris from VR Roundtable because super friendly. I mean, I met him for the first time in in like real life, right? Just a super cool guy. Just want to say thank you so much, Chris. It was absolutely awesome. Okay, number two was meeting. Wait, before you, oh, okay, before go. you go on, real quick, I want to say <sighs> you, your your fireside chats were phenomenal, uh, oh, cool. and they were first on the scene for from anybody. And uh, they they even though your energy level was low, <laughs> <laughs> your the the information you got out was great. I mean, it, 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 I really appreciated both of them. So. I think, uh, once again, Chris, thank you. And yeah. uh, it was good to see it. 
Yeah, and that would have not been possible if it wasn't for Chris. Like, I didn't have the stuff with me. I didn't have a laptop or anything. So that was awesome that, uh, Chris, we, we did that. Um, okay, number two was meeting all the members of the YouTube community, like Zim Talk. See, really, the only YouTube guy I ever met in person, I think, was pretty much MRTV was really the only guy I met at uh, GDC. I met Sebastian from MRTV, and that was a really awesome experience. But this one, I mean, I got to meet all kinds of people. Met Nathy for the first time ever in real life. Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. Cass and Cherry. And oh my God, Cass and Cherry, they are so adorable, so friendly, so nice. I really love them. I didn't actually get to talk to them as much as I wanted to. Um, rowdy guy. You know what's amazing is everybody is cool. Like every like Tyriel, super cool, super friendly. Um, Alex VR was there, crazy friendly. Every everybody, all the YouTubers I met. You would think that there would be oh a thrill seeker. There's a YouTuber named Thrill Seeker, right? I met him there, and I didn't know him from Adam. Like, I didn't know... I don't watch a lot of YouTube shows, to be completely honest with you guys. Not that I'm, like, above it or something, but I just I just don't really have the time to do it very much. And so I don't see a lot of these YouTube shows. But uh, Thrill Seeker met that guy. So freaking cool. L would love to have him on this show for an interview. And I'm going to try to contact him about doing that. But... The thing I was going to say is you would think with all these YouTubers that there would be a couple of them that would like be aloof and like, oh, you know, I'm better than, you know, you know, you would think a few of them would be kind of assholes. I mean, just you just assume that there's got to be a couple of them that would be like that. None of them. None of them. Like everybody was cool. Everybody was hyper friendly. And it didn't matter how many subs you had. Like it like it wasn't like, oh, we're in the plus 50,000 sub club, so stay over there. No, everybody was massively cool. The community was awesome. I mean, I know this is like the thing that you expect somebody to say, but no, this was real. It really was. Everybody was super cool. And that was probably the best thing of real. I mean, I got to thank the generosity of Chris, number one, but but this was one of the best things, man, because just like meeting these people in person and, and just the community, just the vibe and the developers and the other people in media everybody was cool there was no bad vibes anywhere in my opinion um, it's called oculus connect Anthony. yeah, yeah. i know but <laughs> but humanity in general man there's always bad apples right where were they they weren't there the bad apples were not there okay they couldn't afford the 400 dollars. <laughs> okay number three for me rubbing my press badge in mike and nathy's and other youtubers faces because see the thing is so i got in um, I got into this as VR game rankings. The website is just how I happened to get in. Um, and so I ended up with a press badge. And so I had this orange badge and I didn't know that that was any big deal. Like I had no idea that that was going to be anything. But what happened was I got into certain demos and stuff like um, way ahead of like a lot of the YouTuber guys. Like I got a Medal of Honor appointment and none of like the YouTubers didn't really get that. They would have had to wait in like a three and a half hour line. And so that was really cool. I mean, this is mostly a joke. Like I was joking about it. I was like, oh, I'm press, man. You know, and I'd show my badge and stuff. So that was funny. Okay, number four, free food and drink. I mean, yeah, you know, but for the people that paid the money, like they're like, hell yeah, there better be free food and drink. I paid all this money. There better be something, right? But there was good food and plenty of food and you know there was plenty of it there so that was cool um number five witnessing the church of carmack now this is both on day two's keynote but also just seeing him in the hallway he's just such a cool dude like he's he's the guy that you would you know he's like your your older uncle that everybody would love to have you know carmack just such a cool guy he's He's like focused on what he's doing. He doesn't care about any outside thing, but if he's talking to somebody, he's with that person. He doesn't, you know, he's dialed in on that person. 
I mean, Carmack deserves all the love he he gets, you know, and and everybody gathers around him. And it's 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 kind of bizarre. It really is. But it, it totally makes perfect sense. OK, uh, so we're wrapping up on nice things that we're saying about everybody. OK, so let me go to. OK, so here we go. Number six, actually getting a Medal of Honor demo like I do feel blessed because like not everybody got one. Like I don't know if Nathy ever played Medal of Honor or Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. Like a lot of people didn't get a chance. And it's because do you want to wait in a four hour line? I mean, there's all this stuff going on. It's really hard to park yourself into a four hour line. And I did get a Medal of Honor demo. I did feel blessed. And it was a half an hour. Like that demo, like maybe they should have made that demo 15 minutes. And then people, instead of a four hour line, it's a two hour line, right? But um, I did get to play that. That was a real blessing to do that. I finally tried Asgard's Wrath. I actually missed this one at GDC. I didn't get to, I just, because of the lines and stuff, didn't get around to Asgard's Wrath. Finally tried that. And you know what? October 10th, grab it. Grab it. Asgard's Wrath is going to be worth the 40 bucks, in my opinion. You, If you're a graphics whore, this is the game for you. This is the graphics whore you've always been dreaming about. It's a big game, tons of hours. I think it's going to be really, and, and a lot of different styles in terms of like the scale being a giant god and then going down on the ground and all that. I think it's really cool. So very much looking forward to Asgard's Wrath. Number eight for me was trying the hand tracking demo. I didn't get to try the really good hand tracking demo. I tried the farmer's insurance one where you're looking for water damage, but just seeing my hand, like doing all of this and moving my hands around and it freaking worked wonderfully now if i did go like this it did break and if i did move my hands too far downwards it it eventually drops out and so sometimes you're artificially moving your hands up into view because if you go too far down but going to the left and right like it stayed in there i'm amazed honestly that the quest the quest that we have now is going to be able to do the hand tracking even if it's limited Still pretty amazed. Any thoughts on that, Chris, as far as the hand tracking? It sounds neat. Uh, I, I do know that it has, like, limited gameplay potential due to the latency. Like, there's an 80 millisecond delay uh, that's going to keep it from, like, being used in things like Beat Saber or the like. But uh, the fact that it can do it at all, that's... that's we're, we're getting more than we deserve for our three ninety nine, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I am a tiny bit worried though because Zuck, when he was on stage, what it when he was talking about hands in VR, it almost sounded like in the far flung future they want to get rid of controllers altogether. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Hand tracking is great if you're gonna watch Henry or you're gonna use Netflix or something or you're gonna do like Alumet or Dear Angelica. Hand tracking is wonderful for that. And even for maybe some escape the room games and stuff where it would make sense to just do hands and you don't really need a controller. But no, we need our buttons. We need our rumble. Don't take our controllers away from us, but I do like hand tracking. It's great to have that. And it's also for like grandmas and soccer moms, you know, trying to get them to figure out all the buttons is hard. So you want hand tracking. Okay, number nine, I did try the Oculus Link demo. I did it when I was doing Asgard's Wrath. Looked flawless to me, folks. And also those little clips that they put on the uh, the Quest strap, you know, the rubber strap. They had these little clips. And so they routed, they routed the cable back around and then down. So it was basically a Rift S. It was basically a Rift S. And I kind of understand what everybody's saying now. They kind of did kill the Rift S. Because think about it. If you're a new person... Why would you buy a Rift S when you could get an Oculus Quest for free and have a Rift S, basically? Like, what are you losing? And so this is where I want to turn to you, Chris, because you have a Quest. You have the Franken mod and you have a Rift S. Is the only reason to have a Rift S is because of your laptop situation where have Rift S and laptop you can take Asgard's Wrath on the road with you. But other than that, why else would you want a Rift S? Well, I, can I mean, do the comfort. Same thing. 
I could do the same thing with the quest as well, but there are differences. Uh, uh, you know, there's that extra volume of, con uh, you know, the extra camera <clears throat> that points straight up. Uh, you know, it's a slightly higher refresh rate, uh, even though they, they mentioned the, the quest could go to 90. And I don't, if they can go to 90, why don't they put it in just like the, yeah, I know that um, they don't want to recertify it, but um, can, uh, the 144 refresh rate on your index is an experimental mode, is it not? And did they have to get a certification for that? Or did they just say it's experimental? So, you know, I, why can't they do that with the Quest is what I'm wondering. But here's here's the reason I think that having both is still good. They just introduced this whole notion of um, of Horizon, and I notice Horizon is nowhere on your list. <laughs> but they're creating the metaverse where you can go in and meet people and do things together, and you could do those things together locally if you had a quest and you still have your Rift S. So I, I'm thinking for those local games where like having two headsets would be handy this is perfect this is a perfect opportunity i don't have to you know i can share my vr experience locally with someone and uh you know i don't i don't see a problem with that yeah yeah no i i get it i get it you know a lot of people by the way this is in the news and i forgot to mention this i forgot to mention it yesterday and also today Asgard's Wrath, 121 gigs. Oh my God, I need to buy another SSD <laughs> just for Asgard's Wrath. I'm not even kidding, dude, because, dude, my all I have is SSDs in my computer and they're small. Like, I don't have like a terabyte thing or anything like that. And so I'm playing this musical chairs with my VR games. I don't know why I just don't get like an old hard drive and you know, throw it in there somewhere to throw other stuff on there. But it's like, I'm looking at my Steam library and I'm looking at my Oculus library and I'm looking for games that are like, or experiences that are like 20 gigs that I don't use very often. And then it's like, ah, I don't really play it that much. I'm going to delete it. Now I've got freaking Asgard's Wrath coming out at 121 gigs. What about you? Do you have plenty of hard drive space? It's not really a worry. Do you ever have to like balance hard drive space for these games um my my desktop has tons uh and, and i often stream from that so uh that that's i've got a big uh i've got big storage on that my laptop pc or the backpack pc uh that one i i swapped out for a bigger one but it's it's not that big so yeah there, there are issues there there are times where i go to like just play a game and this is the thing with pcs man you go to play them and it's like you cannot do this until an oculus update occurs and you don't have enough space oh, <laughs> so it's like uh all right get rid of defector <laughs> i haven't played it yet but i'm getting rid of it for now <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and so the last one I have on here, trying Echo VR in the Quest. I was able to try it, and uh, Which what do one? I... Which one, the shooting one or the disc one? It's the there disc one, the disc oh, one. Okay. I don't think they have the shooting one in there. Like, I don't think that's part of it right now. I don't know if it's ever coming. It was just the disc thing, basically. So, what do I say? So, basically, this is... Echo VR and the Quest is at the same time incredibly impressive that it actually freaking kind of works. Like it's incredibly impressive that it kind of works. But on the other side, it's like, oh my God, if you are a graphics whore, stay as far away from possible. Because like this will be all the graphic whores rallying cry will be like like if anybody talks about oh graphics are just as good on quest practically like you blink and you don't really notice the difference everybody's going to say well what about echo vr what about echo vr because it is a downgrade like a mofo graphically but 
again, it's kind of a maze balls because the thing about Echo VR and also like Lone Echo and stuff like that is you take your hand and you put it on a surface, you know, on some kind of block or something that's in the game. You're touching it. And it's really cool how your hand like reacts to these surfaces. Like they've done that better than basically anyone, I think, in terms of like pushing off like a wall or an object. And that basically works. It like your hand sometimes kind of disappears a little bit into the object, but it basically works. And the gameplay basically is there. You know, so it's it's cool. I mean, it's, you know, four people at a time. You know, they did like a, a multi-demo. I mean, four against four and all that. I mean, it basically works. There was like Oculus, like eSport guys that had Oculus jerseys that were there. They were all playing it and talking about it. And they were saying, you know, there's certain things you can't do. But, you know, pretty impressive overall. So Was it um, given a date? Uh, no, but you know, based on what I saw, it ain't coming this year. Like based on what I saw, I don't think it's coming this year. Well, um, that might be, that might be why you're seeing, uh, you know, the graphics not be as top notch as they could be because optimization passes are the last thing you do before you ship a game. So, yeah, you know, if it's that far off, it's, there's a possibility that they'll, they'll tweak it up. It could. It could, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> Steve Drumheller of Conquer Reality has number 11, meeting Steve Drumheller of Conquer <laughs> Reality fame. No, that was cool. I did meet Steve. And here's the thing. Like, the first time I met Steve, I only talked to him for, like, a quick minute because I think we're on, like, the way – we're on our way somewhere or something. And so it was just like, hey, how's it going? You know, talk for a minute. But then, luckily, when the show basically was all over with, me and Chris were about to do our like wrap-up show, but I saw Steve was able to chat with him for a while, and that was really cool. And again, another example of just incredibly friendly, like everybody. Oh, you know, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, Steve Drumheller. I mean, he is of Conquer Reality fame. Big time YouTuber, right? But I also met a lot lot of people that were just viewers of VR365. Like people randomly came up to me and said, hey, you're Anthony of uh, VR365, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, met these different viewers. And then also on, um, I was doing some of the demos and like some of the people that did the demos were like, hey, you're Anthony of VR365, right? And I'm like, yeah. It was just cool. It's just cool to meet um, actual viewers there. And one guy talked to me for a little while and he's like, you know, keep doing it, man. Your show is awesome. You know, I listened to it on the way to work and everything. And so sometimes when you like, because sometimes you get discouraged after a while and you're like, F it, I'm done with this thing. I'm going to stop. Why am I doing this? But when you meet somebody like that in person and you talk to them and they're like, dude, I really like your show. Um, oh, is our stream down? Did it die? Let's see. Somebody's saying that. Of course, we always get that in chat. Seems like it's working. Um, Zoom Talk says it's up, Jay. Yeah. So it seems like it's working. Although my OBS does. Oh, yep. Stream is down. Hmm, maybe it's mm. having some issues because my OBS does kind of screw up every once in a while. Yeah. And Chris T says, yep, stream is down. Okay. It says it's like it's still counting over here on the timer. And um can any oh stream my bad, I read. Oh no, they're saying oh, steam. steam is down. Oh steam <laughs> is down. Okay. <laughs> I'm all tripping. All right. Um well yeah, so that's pretty much most of the stuff I wanted to get into. Um oh we want to talk about tilt five. So hold on here. Let me grab a trailer for tilt five. And because you are a backer, right? Yep. Yep. I decided to do it. Uh, I watched a couple of videos. This is a thing that I was considering getting back in the cast AR days. And what they're presenting now is much different and in some ways much improved, in some ways scaled down from what they had when they first uh, left Valve and... Um, we're presenting this AR VR solution. <clears throat> the reason I'm interested in it is um, I'm primarily a board gamer. And um, one of the things that this promises to do is 
really enhanced and um, it's an enhancement to board games and it's it's a solution for the setup of board games because games are getting more and more complex with more and more stuff. This gives you that sci-fi toy, you know, the 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 Star Wars chess board with moving pieces thing going on. Um, and it has a huge field of view. It's like 110 degrees. So I've tried Magic Leap. I've tried HoloLens. Both of them are postage stamp like things in your eye. And it's like, eh, <laughs> for all the, you know, the, the, talk about your trough of disillusionment. <laughs> they, they promise you what you see in the videos and then what you actually get is nowhere near it. This board thing is the key to making Tilt 5 work um, because they're limiting, they're not doing AR anywhere. Uh, they're doing AR in a very specific place, and it does two things. Um, it it locks down the area and gives you a much brighter and more solid uh, solution. So, like, you're not seeing ghostly objects. You're you're seeing a more um, a more solid result. So, and it also has the ability to um, bring remote people. So, like, I, you know, there are some gamers that I used to play with. Uh, play these games with locally and we've tried things like tabletop simulator and, and the like. So I'm always looking for that, that next thing that's going to, to make that work. And, uh, okay. Can I ask you a couple of questions? So sure. in terms of like the board games and stuff, I understand all that because think of the setup time setup and takedown, and then also all the rules because the rules can be built into it. So like, you know, the rules, you know, like the, the instructions and stuff, like all of that can kind of be in there. So that's great as well. But my biggest question is licensing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like the stuff that you're into, is any of that going to be licensed for this? Like what, you know, that's the question really. Well, they actually announced a partnership with Fantasy Grounds, or I think it's called Fantasy Grounds, or maybe Fantasy Realm. They have licensing with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, a whole bunch of other companies, and they have assets that you can buy. You can play these on tablets, phones, laptops, all of which can be connected to Tilt Five. So anywhere that application exists, it can be plugged into this and appear. So all the assets for those games suddenly appear. Now I'm not a big role player, but I have in the past, and maybe I will in the in the future. Um, I'm also not above rolling up my sleeves, going into Unity, and hacking something out that I really want. So like if I've got a game that I I really think this would look great in this in environment, I'll break out their SDK. You know, scan in some files and and start cobbling together um, the thing myself. Um, but like the promise is there. It, it I I know for a fact that you know it's going to come and um, it's probably not going to meet my my wildest dreams. But it's 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 part of that AR future. And and for the price point they have, I've paid more for board games. Than, I, than this thing costs. It's, it's like $350 or something like that. And a side yeah. bonus, you get an Xbox 360 uh, camping lighter as well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wand is kind of ugly. But uh, I guess they wanted to make sure you... I, I guess it works great for their purposes. It, it's, it's actually got a six-stuff controller. And um, you can actually reach in and they show you moving the cubes with it. Um, right now, it's a bunch of demos. But um, by the time it comes out, dude, looking solid apps. Looking mm -hmm. at that Smash TV-like game, that would be perfect in this thing. You know, like a mm -hmm. Smash TV. Oh, that would be so sweet. Like, I, when I'm looking at this, all I can think about is like, oh, this would be so cool for a lot of retro games. Like, if they could get a license for like... Miss Pac-Man, Donkey Kong. You know, it's basically you got like a tabletop arcade right there too, you know. Like, yeah, but a lot of people are saying Gauntlet is the killer outfit. Oh, yeah, outfits. yeah. You know, Red Warrior needs food badly. <laughs> it's like <laughs> run that guy around the table. Um, but, you know, it's it's 
it's it's a toy. It's it's another thing to throw into my collection of uh, you know. I have all those things that Carmack talks about being a detriment to your experience. <laughs> I have the the haptic uh, the haptic backpack. I have the um, the force tube. I have cyber shoes, which we tried to use at a party, but it was like not set up properly, and I was too busy cooking to help them out. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things where uh, there's not enough time in the day for me to get all these things working. But I, I, the fact that they're there, I, I at least want to try it. I'm that guy who wants to try. So yeah. I should go to the shows and buy less stuff. But like, eh, if it comes down to paying some dollars to just to get it in hand, I'm, I'll do it. So this is coming like next summer, roughly. It, next spring, spring, I think in okay. March. Like you can get it this year. Uh, if you pay more money, if oh. it's like pay to be a beta tester, we'll give you an early version of the glasses and then give you the regular one when it comes out next year. I was like, yeah, I'm done being a beta pet tester. Uh -huh. give me <laughs> yeah, it's a good <laughs> idea, though. I mean, it's a smart idea to try to and their Kickstarter is fully funded, like real quick, like the first day. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They had like a, a weird situation go down and uh, then they, they got funding. They, they got backed by some um, somebody came in with a sack full of money and said, make this thing happen. And uh, so they, they finally banged it out. And it's been five years, you know, back in 2000 or close. Yeah. 2014 was when the cast AR uh, Kickstarter and I almost pushed the go button back then. And they ended up giving all those people their money back. So, uh, you know, I, I think what we're going to get is something pretty polished. And just listening to the, um, you can find on YouTube, she has a channel, Cherry Ellsworth, I believe is her yeah, name. Yeah. And um, she's really genuine. She's the female Carmack of engineering. Where Carmack software, she's hardware. And this is her baby. She's poured five years of her life into it. And I, I kind of... I feel she's genuine in her efforts to give us something awesome. So yeah, I'm she, back. In. She's definitely all in, like 100% all in. She is mm -hmm. all about this. Um, what about like all the why? So actually the number one question I have for you, like, I mean, if we were to try to go to the Debbie Downer side, we'd talk about the wires, which are, you know, in a lot of their marketing, you, they kind of hide them a little bit. I mean, you see them, oh, yeah. but... If they hide but, them totally. You don't see yeah. them anywhere in this video. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guess what? It's the same wire that we're getting with the uh, the Oculus. Oculus Link, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a USB-C wire. Um, up to three are connectable to a single PC. But you can also, like I said, uh, connect it to a laptop or a phone. So you could have the wire going personally. Uh, how all those integrate together, um, yeah, that's yet to be seen. But there's like still 30 days or so in the campaign. So, And she's talking about doing her video series and, and giving you deeper insight into how all this works. So I'll just be watching that. And if anything strikes me as foul, I'll, I can always back out. I haven't given them the money yet. But... Uh, I, you know, I have faith, like I said, so I think it's going to be a good thing. What about, so like you can use a, a phone, a tablet or a laptop, but did they give like minimum specifications that like your tablet would need or your phone would need? I'm guessing, a, you know, it'd probably run on, you wouldn't need like the greatest laptop in the world to do it. Well, one of the things that's going on here is um, that headset, that that uh, the glasses. A lot of the compute is going in that, so that's uh, allowing things like phones and tablets to work. Like it's doing uh, 180 hertz uh, upscale upscaling of the source material. So, like, she she explains it much better, <laughs> but it's it strikes me that like. Um, the fact that a lot of the um, the work um, doing the video is being put into the cameras, like what you have on your head is a, a camera, a projector that's sending dual videos down to this material and the material is bouncing it directly back to your eyes. So unlike Magic Leap and unlike um, um, HoloLens, it's, it's not 
refracting it inside the glasses. It's refracting it in the real world, and that's giving you a lot more freedom oh, to yeah. um, because no matter where you look at it, it's bouncing directly back to you, and it's like isolated. So it's like the the projection coming from another person's video uh, headset isn't interfering with yours because it comes that light comes right back to you. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a cool concept, and I am going to, uh, well, I'm, I'm, th I'm probably I'm about 85% sure that I'm going to go to this, like, XRDC 2019 thing, which is, like, mid-October, not too far away here in San Francisco. Thanks. Hopefully, they'll be there. Maybe I could get a quick demo uh, if they happen to be there, but... But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I mean, I'm interested. I mean, for this to gain a lot of traction, of course, it's going to have to come out and then people are going to have to really be hyped by it. And then they're going to have to get a couple small developers that make some interesting things and then it gains more hype and then mm -hmm. it really becomes like a, a, a cool thing. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool idea. And so we'll have to see how that all shakes out. There's a, a Sony PlayStation 3 game called The Eye of Judgment. It made use of the Sony camera, and it was a card game. Um, I actually do like card games. It's funny that I, <laughs> I just didn't bother with that Valve one. Yeah. But uh, this game, you, you had a physical table. You put the card down. It had a QR code in it, and it brought whatever was on the card to life. And you were playing cards in order to have creatures on a board battle it out and the animations would come to life as they went into combat. Great audio, great video. It was a fantastic game. Sony, of course, killed the servers on it, so it's a dead in the water experience. <laughs> I think you can still play it on a, uh, a, in a solo game, but like you can't play it online with anybody anymore. Um, that would be a perfect translation to this. So... I'm, I'm hoping things like that find a new life, you know, because like, I really love that game. I still have the cards. So, you know, maybe I could uh, come up with a rudimentary <laughs> um, rebuild of it. Yeah. Uh, Push the button says, I'm going to back this on the Kickstarter. And oh. um, uh, yeah, lots of people are saying, some, well, lots of people are talking about Steam not working, really. Uh, Steam's down all over the place. Uh, Zim Talk. Zimtalk Five says they should have had board games at OC Six. Uh, well, I thought I thought like it would be cool if Tilt Five and Vive Cosmos had like some like kind of counter programming of their own, where like off site, you know, hey, do you want to see Tilt Five? It's two blocks down. You can check it out. You know, or the Vive Cos, you know, Vive is like. They're like a block down, or they're across the street. They're giving demos of the Vive Cosmos because everybody's here. You know, all the YouTubers, all the media, they're all here. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it might have been a smart thing. There was a, an opportunity for me to check out in real. There was like some kind of demo, some kind of like gallery or something that had in real glasses, but I, I was gonna do it, and then I ultimately didn't get a chance to get around to doing it. But anyway. Um, we've been going for quite a while. I'd continue to go, but you know what? I'm starving. So yeah, I've had my breakfast. I have not had lunch. I should have had an emergency banana on hold, but I didn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put my little outro logo here on the screen. And we're going to go ahead and um, basically wrap it up. So anyway, I wanted to say thank you to everybody that's joined the show today. Everybody in chat. Um, and also, of course, thank you to Chris for joining me here and going over the discussion of OC6. You were perfect, I gotta say. Absolutely perfect. Because you had kind of the opposite take to everything I had, which makes it more interesting for the viewer, ultimately, right? And so, awesome having you, Chris. Thanks so much for joining me. A pleasure, sir, always. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, go ahead and stay on. I'm just going to go ahead okay. and uh, stop the show with you on here. Normally, I bump everybody and then stop the show separately. But basically, Jarilla says he's always hungry. It just so happens, dude, my stream is at like 5 to 6, and then it's dinner time. And then my stream is at noon, and then it's lunch time. It's just the way it works out. But yeah, um, what I was going to say is I will be back tomorrow on Twitch at noon and my hope is for tomorrow is 
to kind of get back into like regular, just run of the mill news, like games that have release dates and, and maybe some PlayStation VR things and, and stuff like Asgard's Wrath being 121 gigs and, you know, little tidbits like that, that I really haven't paid much attention to over the last couple of days need to get back into it. And so I'll be doing that tomorrow. So look forward to that at noon. And everybody have a wonderful uh, weekend. Remember, opportunity. Oh, you know, there is a daily deal. I should maybe mention that real quick. Bouncing back over to our webinar, uh, just because I did happen to take a look at this real fast. And on the Rift Store, the daily deal is Waltz of the Wizard, extended edition, $7.50. I actually have tried this. I played this on my Valve Index. Drop dead gorgeous on the Valve Index works wonderfully well um i'm sure it works great on oculus as well so that is the deal of the day 750 i mean a great developer alden dynamics unfortunately they gave away the store for like so freaking long with that demo that they had basically and so it's kind of like a lot of people don't want to pay money now but you know 750 not a bad deal so just wanted to mention that really quick but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and bounce out of here. I'll be back tomorrow. But uh, Vertigo, $1.50, that's a pretty good deal. So remember that. I don't think there's any like free demos going on this weekend as far as I know. Um, so that's pretty much it. But thank you, everybody, for coming out. And I'll Dimension see Dimension Hunter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dimension Hunter, 99 cents. You can't beat it with a stick. You got to do Dimension Hunter for 99 cents. Um, but yeah, uh, that'll do it. I'll see everybody on Twitch tomorrow. So uh, everybody have a good one. Take it easy. Bye-bye.